Hey everybody, welcome back to Gramophone. Today we're going to be doing an Audio U episode where we teach you about how audio works. And this one's going to be more fun if you're a little bit more of an enthusiast or you want to learn more about the technical aspects of audio. I'm not going to get too far out into the weeds with this stuff, but just the basics of what you might want to understand about different amplifiers and more specifically how they work and what it means for your experience as a listener. Don't forget to subscribe to the Gramophone channel and click that bell icon. And here is the question of the day. Up until now, what has been your favorite type of amplifier? So what we're going to talk about today are different classes of amplifier or amplifier topology, to use a more technical term, as well as a little bit of what separates integrated amplifiers from discrete or separate pieces, such as standalone preamplifiers and power amplifiers. For those of you who are really new to audio but you want to learn, I'm glad you're here. What is an amplifier at all? Well, there's a little bit more to that question, but the simplest answer I can give you for now is that an amplifier is the muscle to your speaker. And so when we're building audio systems, you can have a great speaker, you know, a, a great strong hand to manipulate that sound and make something that sounds incredible. But equally, you need a great amp to control it because this is only as good as the muscles that have the strength to do so and the fine amount of control to do it well. Some amps might have big power, but do they have gentleness or delicacy or control or finesse? The ability to do something well is also part of the equation. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about are amplifier topologies or what you've heard described as class. Now, on the table with me are three different integrated amps. We'll talk about what that means later, too. And while these are not every category of what's available, this is a pretty good representation of what you're generally going to find. And I can talk about some of the offshoots along with them. Here we have the Denon A110 Anniversary Amplifier. We have the NAV C700. And we have the JBL SA750 Anniversary Amp. So at the top, the very first amplifier to ever be conceived for the audio purposes, Class A. And it was given the name A for literally being the first, as in first letter of the alphabet. Class A amps are unique in that most still believe, and with good reason, that they are generally the best sounding amp there is. That is because the way that they work is continuous linear power. It's like a circuit or a switch that's just always on no matter what's happening. So whether music is being played, it's on. If music is not being played, it's still on. It is just an open pathway of energy for music to be delivered to your speaker. And therefore, you could say that it's the most natural. Now, while generally speaking, Class A is the best overall sounding, it doesn't come without drawbacks. Class A tends to be very, very big, very, very heavy, and very, very hot, as in it runs very hot. A true Class A amp that's putting out some serious power, you know, let's say 20, 30 watts plus of pure Class A, and I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've got a straight open circuit of pure audio muscle, that actually is. Moving on, there's Class B, and we're gonna loop back around because you've already heard me say Class AB because there's a partnership going on here too. Straight up Class B, basically doesn't exist in the world of audio anymore, and it, it really didn't for long, if at all. And the reason for that is because while Class B can switch on and off, whereas Class A could not, that was inherently the problem. Every time something would switch, you would hear that switch, and it would just completely ruin the musical experience. To get some of the best of Class A, while the benefit of being able to conserve power Therefore, a marriage was made, Class A-B. By taking a Class A circuit, but overlapping it with the ability to switch into a B mode, where more power can be demanded through the actual amplification muscle, if you will, that gave us a product that could deliver serious power when it was needed, but could be switched off, not kill your electric bill, and not nearly set your house on fire, yet, in the softer notes where we're in a five to 10 watt range, run in class A and sound great. The advantage of AB is that running that A constantly 
overlapping into the B, you can really mitigate that switching frequency and or sound. It's what we call the crossover point in an amp. Nowadays to the point where it's virtually unnoticeable, basically at all. We're gonna skip to class D. What happened to class C? There is something called class C that exists, but it has no usable audio application. It's something for completely different. And the way that all these names were decided was just by going down the alphabet. They don't actually mean anything other than the order in which they were invented, patented, and put into service. So class D is next. The D does not mean digital. Class D works by pulsing at very high rates the energy needed to make the sound. And modern Class D designs like the C700 and even better, like we see in the NAD M33, they work at such a speed, at such a rate, and with such a great calibration that all of those former stigmas and lesser qualities are completely, completely erased. And that actually gets very, very close to what a good Class A amp would sound like to begin with. But why choose a Class D after going through all this stuff? Well, you can already see one example. You see how small this is? This is 80 watts. This is Class AB, and it's also 80 watts. This can make the same amount of power as this being not half the size, not half the weight, and at 90% plus efficiency, as in very little heat relative to the power it's delivering to your speakers. You would choose this if heat is a concern, if space is a concern, and just generally efficiency is a concern. It's a worthy contender at each of its price points now, and really can, and in my opinion, in the last three to four years, even just that little window has begun to stand up to AB products. So don't write it off. So that brings us down to Class G, which was the next letter appropriate for an audio application. Class G is actually not very unlike AB. But notice how this is a little smaller than this, and on paper, this actually makes a little bit more power than this. How is that happening? How do we take that AB goodness, but we make it more efficient? We make it not as heavy. We make it have less heat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Rather than having one power supply rail or just one input voltage, Class G has two, maybe even sometimes three, though generally two. A lower power rail and a higher power rail. Most of the time, it's just gonna run in that lower power option and that's all you need. But when demanded, that higher power rail will kick in and it does that intelligently. It's nothing that you or I have to worry about. And now you have a product that doesn't have to constantly pour off so much heat, that can access that power when it needs it. But since it's not going to be using it all the time, and in fact, the minority of the time, now it can be smaller. And thus, you have a more efficient product that still has much of the benefits of something like this. So that is a rundown of how the different classes behave and why you should choose them. And while this video was mainly about topologies and how they work, we're gonna do a little blurb about the difference between integrated amps and separates. There's two components in an amplifier overall that you need to have, a pre-amplifier and a power amplifier. Integrated amps take that preamp, or what we call front end, and that power amp, or rear end, and marry it together in one box for the sake of convenience. Separates are discrete preamplifiers and power amplifiers, of which you can find many examples of on our channel. Just look at Macintosh products, for example. The reason that you would want separates is you're going a little higher end now, you're gonna need a little bit more space, but the idea of separating preamplifier circuitry running at quieter, smoother, lower levels from the big power supplies associated with power amps can make for an overall cleaner, more faithfully reproduced sound. But that said, the reason there's all integrateds on this table, this is kind of the age of the integrated. These have gotten really, really good at their respective price points. And especially for new listeners, integrateds are by far the most accessible. I hope you guys learned something today and you found that not only educational, but hopefully somewhat entertaining as well. Be sure to visit skybygramophone.com. We'll have the link down below. We have all kinds of this stuff available online, including the products you see in front of me here today. And of course, stop by the showroom and demo some of these products. And you can find those showrooms in Timonium, Columbia in Gaithersburg. And of course, don't forget about our special kitchen design center over in Hunt Valley. 
for your next interior design project or home improvement focused project. They do great work. All right, y'all, don't forget the question of the day. Let me know if you have other audio questions in the comments below and make some suggestions for future audio you topics because I want to talk about what you want to know about. Thanks for watching. Be seeing you.